everybody. I'm Gail Sacco. I am the director of the library. I'd like to welcome you to the Boysville Public Library for our program, Military Memories and Veterans Voices. This program is the culmination of a month at the library honoring those who have served our military with programs for all ages, from the little ones who come to story hour to adults. It's included collections of items for both veterans and active soldiers. And I hope that it has helped people to understand the huge service, oh my goodness, <laughs> the huge service that those in the military provides for us. Excuse me, I didn't know I was gonna get emotional. My dad was a World War II vet. <laughs> And one of the things I learned from him and other veterans is that for those who serve, it is not about politics, it's about our country, the United States of America. To both the veterans and active, active military, thank you for your service. We really appreciate it. And if you could stand up, we would... And I want to thank all the people who partnered with the library to make this program happen. These include the trustees of the public library, the president of our board, Jana Schillinglaw, is sitting over there. Thank you, Jana. Uh, uh, the Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts, the Friends of the Library, and both the Adult Youth Services staff at the library. We've all kind of worked very hard to pull this program together. It started as something small and just kind of blossomed into something really huge. Um, Gail Brown and Colleen Zeleff brainstormed and led the activities here and made the program happen um, so that it was really awesome. Everyone involved learned something along the way about our military service because of Gail and Colleen's ideas. So a special thank you to them. And now Leo who is a 10th grader at the Voorheesville High School and has a lovely voice, will lead us in the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we Twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's Welcome to the Military Memories and Veterans Voices Program. I am Gail Brown, Manager of Youth and Family Services. Veterans Day is November 11th, so during the month of November, the Voorheesville Public Library offered a series of programs and collections to honor, support, and thank our military. One of these programs has been a project that paired youth in grades 5 through 11 with veterans and active military members. The young people interviewed veterans from World War II, 
the Korean War, the Vietnam War, the Gulf War, those who served in Iraq and Afghanistan, and active military members. It has been a living history project as the students and Boy Scouts heard first-hand accounts from veterans who fought in foreign wars. The age range of the interviewees spans 70 years. Many of them are in attendance today. One of the best ways to honor the sacrifices of those who have served and continue to serve is to hear and share their stories, most especially with the younger generation. It has been my privilege to meet all of you. Each interview was approximately 45 minutes. The students and Boy Scouts will be sharing only a small portion of what they learned in their interviews. So family members, ask them what they learned because they won't be sharing all of that with you today. I want to thank the students and the Boy Scouts from Troop Number 73 for their dedication and commitment to this project and for the respect they showed the veterans and military members they interviewed. More important, thank you to our veterans and military members for your service. After the student's presentation, we will have a short intermission with light refreshments courtesy of the Friends of the Library. Ryan Smithson, Iraqi veteran and author, will be speaking after the intermission. And I ask you to please hold your applause until the end of the presentation. Thank you. Hi, I am Ryan and I had the honor to interview Kenneth H. Bailey. Ken Bailey achieved the rank of T-5 Corporal in the 4th Cavalry, 1st Army, 7th Corps. He served in the Army during World War II from November 4, 1942 to October 30, 1945. While he was in the service, he drove vehicles primarily for a commanding officer. He drove motorcycles, jeeps, and armored cars. Mr. Bailey started his basic training at Fort Meade, South Dakota, and described it as tough because it was very, very cold. He was in South Dakota for six months before going to Paris, Texas for another six months of basic training. After his time in basic training, he was shipped to England where he received additional training and prepared for the invasion. Mr. Bailey was at Utah Beach just six days after D-Day in June 1944. He advanced through France and Germany encountering heavy resistance along the way. Mr. Bailey served with honor and courage and was awarded a Bronze Star for the Mortain counterattack. A Bronze Star is earned for either heroic achievement or heroic service in a combat zone. Mr. Bailey also received the American Service Medal, French Medal of Honor, the Good Conduct Medal, and five Battle Stars, which are awarded to indicate service in a specific battle or campaign. Some advice he had for the younger generation was to not lie or exaggerate, and to do things now because you don't know what is going to happen in the future. With all of the places that he went, he said some of his favorite places were Paris and London. It was an honor and privilege to speak with Mr. Bailey. Thank you for your service. Hi, my name is uh, Ryan and I have been given the privilege of interviewing Frank Dashnall, who was in the Navy, and he enlisted in the Navy because he did not want to go to school anymore. So he joined the Navy when he had, was 17, 17. He was put on a ship called USS Oliver Mitchell. This ship was a mine destroyer in Okinawa, Japan. He got very sick on the USS Oliver Mitchell and was sent to a hospital in Philadelphia. When he got, a be when he got better, he went to a ship called the USS Shea that was also sent to Okinawa, Japan. The ship, the, sh the ship was struck in the hole by an Oka bomb, better known as a kamikaze pilot. A kamikaze pilot is an airplane made out of aluminum and wood. As the plane flies, it, in it sh shoots three rockets, and in the tip of it, the plane carries 2,000 pounds of dynamite. The plane went straight through the ship and disabled all the communication systems. The ship was filling with water. The crewmen used buckets and patched the holes so the ship could get the Kermit Island for temporary repairs. Then, Frank got to Kermit Island. That's when he got out of the Navy. Frank, you may think that you could not save anybody's life, 
but I think you saved thousands of Americans. Americans, thank you for your service, Frank. I had the honor of interviewing Tom Lemmy. He's 91 years old, and his rank is corporal. He was in the Navy Marine Corps. He was a demolitionist. He served for 19 months, from 1944 to 1945. He served in Iwo Jima. Um, he was trained in Maui, Hawaii. Uh, he was drafted into the military, and um, he had some challenging experiences, like on Iwo Jima, there was a napalm bomb over his head, which might have killed him and many really other people. <laughs> <laughs> but fortunately, the napalm was a dud, so it didn't kill anyone. And then uh, there was an explosion one night when he was sleeping, and him and a couple of his friends were injured. So he went to a hospital in Hawaii where he got Purple Heart and he met Shirley Temple. There you go. <laughs> and look at that smile on his face. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, I'm Nicholas. And I had the honor of interviewing uh, John Livingston. Uh, he was a gunner's mate, third class. He served in the uh, he served in the Naval Armed Guard, which basically what they did they would go around and uh, serve on merchant ships and protected them from uh, from uh, the Japanese uh, bombers and German. Uh, so he his jobs were to clean guns and uh, keep watch. Uh, he served through the years of 1944 to 1945, which was two years, one month, and one day. He, uh, he served around the Philippines and on uh, ships in that area. Um, he wanted to join because his brother had enlisted in the Air Force, and he wanted to help out his family. Uh, an interesting thing he told me that was uh, when, he, when him and the ships he was serving with were docked at night, okay. there would... Uh, there would be Japanese air raids. You never really knew what was going on, and uh, and uh, he never really. Uh, they never got, never actually hit anything, but they got really close one time. And uh, I thought that was pretty interesting how he could uh, deal with that. So, yeah. Unfortunately, Alexander could not be with us today. He suffered a mild concussion, so he is home recovering. He's okay. Um, so Aiden, my friend here, is going to uh, fill in for him. Hello, and I am Aiden. I have the honor to, uh, uh, let's see, uh, where are we starting? Okay. I have the honor to introduce Walter Schultz as a World War II vet. He wanted to serve in the Navy because he was 14 years old. He listened to the radio with his grandparents when, a, when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. He asked his grandparents to allow him to join, and at first she said no. Walter changed his, mind, or changed his age on his birth certificate and tried to join without her permission. After, her, after his grandmother heard what he had done, she changed her mind and let him join. Walter wanted to protect and defend his country and our freedom. He did this to serve and protect his fellow Americans. When he asked those, or when Alex asked those questions, he thought Walter was a good citizen and deserved to be honored for his bravery and everything he had done for this country. He did not join the military because he liked it. He wanted to keep America a home of the free and the land of the brave. Thank you. Thank you for filling in for you. Hello, I'm Mason, and I interviewed Dr.
Tom J. Smith Jr. He was a corporal, and he was he served in the uh, Marine Corps, Fourth Fourth Marine Division, and, and in F Company. He is 93 years old. He was originally trained as a Tom as one of Thompson's Raiders, which is a special uh, military branch that goes behind enemy lines. But this group got disbanded, so he decided that he was going to stay in the Marines and he would be a scout. He got two Purple Hearts in the war, but he was wounded four times. And he served from 1943 to 1945, from everywhere to Saipan, Tinian, Marshall Islands, and Iwo Jima. Um, and one of the most important things that I took away from this is that he took uh, Japanese Vice Admiral Kakuji Kaku, Kakudo? Or? Tom, how do you pronounce that? Kakudo. Kakudo, okay. Okay. <laughs> As a uh, prisoner of war, and he was a commander of the uh, Japanese First Air Fleet, and that just seems insane. <laughs> um, and his favorite part, or favorite memory, was that he came out alive. Takeaway for the younger generation was that he did something and then it was over with. <laughs> Thank you for your service, Tom. Yeah. You did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Jason and I my veteran's name is Paul Keith. He is eighty five years old. His rank was private first class in the army. He was in the Army Infantry, and his job was to use the M1 rifle, and he also used the machine gun. Mr. O'Keefe served from 1952 to 1954 at Fort Devens, Massachusetts. He also served at Camp Atterbury, Indiana. He traveled to Japan and South Korea. He entered the Army after he was drafted and was sent overseas in a plane to the Korean War. He served for 13 months in South Korea. His favorite place was Japan. The vehicles and machinery he used was a Jeep and a 3.5 rocket launcher. He was a chaplain. He helped save the people that were hurt by carrying them and staying with them. He received the Combat in Infantry Badges Award from, South from the South Korean President. This was uh, my veteran, and I was proud to um, talk to him. Hello again, everybody. <laughs> I had the honor of interviewing George Saba, Buck Sergeant in the Korean War. Mr. Saba enlisted in the Air Force because his brother enlisted as a Marine, and he wanted to be in Korea with his brother. He also had a large amount of patriotism and wanted to serve his country. Mr. Saba's father also served in World War I. Mr. Saba was a flight engineer on a C-47, which is a cargo carrier plane and a B-27, which was a bomber plane. One of Mr. Sabbath's specific memories of achievement was when, he, was when one of his bombing runs over a North Korean-held base was directly hit and destroyed. His crew he flew with was very good at what they did. They flew in low and fast at uh, dusk time and destroyed their target nine times out of ten. Another interesting thing that Mr. Sabbath told me was he took a position on a train to keep off enemies when they tried to take off food and goods from the plane when it went through a or train when it went through a slow stretch. The North Koreans would take oh, I already said that. But that was Mr. Saba's job to stop that. With his M1, he would fire off a few warning rounds at the Koreans as they would come up to the train. One of the downsides of this job was having to sleep on a rocky and jerky train. Taking a position, or taking this position, he wasn't guaranteed much sleep on the train. Another cool thing about Mr. Saba is that he was a Boy Scout himself. He ranked up to Light Scout and enjoyed every minute of it. He was always taking part in merit badges and loved winter camping. His Boy Scout troop Troop 100 would go to an airfield and have a local farmer drop off some of their hay to put in their sleeping bags to complete the winter camping experience. 
If you were if you were not out of bed the next morning on time, then you, along with your sleeping bag, would be dragged over to a snowbank and thrown in it. <laughs> Looking back at this, at his experience in Korea, there is nothing that he, even if he could, would change. With the amount of patriotism and will to fight for his country makes him feel not only proud, but honored to have served his country. Thank you. Hi, my name is Alex, and I had the pleasure of interviewing Commander Wendell Thayer. He served in Vietnam in the Navy in the Construction Battalion, also called the CBs. He served four years active duty, and then afterwards he was in the reserves, during which he traveled to France, Spain, Italy, Germany, Portugal, and Poland. He spent, during his active duty, he spent both, both time in Japan and Vietnam, especially in Da Nang. He was drafted into the war, but he chose to stay in the reserves, which really shows his dedication to his country. He enjoyed his time in Japan a lot, and even though he was drafted, he found out that he really enjoyed doing his job. Thank you for your service, Commander Thayer. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ali, and I interviewed Matt Mason, my grandfather. He enlisted in the Army and became a specialist in May 1964. He said for three years, he was in boot camp from 1964 to 1965. He served in Germany from 1965 to 1966. He served in Vietnam from 1966 to 1967. All of his brothers served as well. His dad did too. He enlisted because it felt, he felt it was the right thing to do. His job was to operate all of the machines. In his free time, he would go bowling or write letters to his loved ones. For him, the hardest part was staying away from his loved ones. An interesting fact is he and his friend both joined the Army in May 1964. They both went through training together, but his friend went to Vietnam before him, so they got split up. Later on, he went to Vietnam, and they met up. And um, our next interviewer could not be here either, so Allie is going to read hers. This is by Kennedy and she interviewed Rose Kent. Rose Kent served in the Navy and was in one of the first five classes that allowed women in the Naval Academy. Ms. Kent was in the military for nine years total, four in the Naval Academy and five in San Antonio, Texas. While serving, she earned a medal for leadership. Ms. Kent joined the Navy because she wanted to do something different than go to college and was excited that there was an opportunity for women to serve. She felt military training was very demanding and said that the hardest part about being in the military was dealing with people that did not want women to serve. Can you hear me in the back? Hello? <coughs> Hello. My name is Ian, and I had the honor and privilege, privilege of interviewing John Love. He is 53 years old and served in the United States Air Force, where he earned the, sar or the rank of Sergeant. Sergeant Love served for seven years from 1984 to 1991. During, during his time in the Air Force, he was stationed in Germany and Florida but he had the opportunity to travel, travel all over Europe. His work in the Air Force centered around aircrafts. He learned, he learned a tremendous amount about planes and how to take care of them by repairing planes at base camp. He did maintenance, maintenance on F-4s and F-16s, both of which are fighter jets. But most importantly, Sergeant Love was involved in implementing electronic warfare on the aircraft and radar evading equipment with the purpose of confusing and evading enemy radar. When I asked John Love why he chose to join the United States Air Force, he replied that his family inspired him, so <clears throat> inspired him, and so right after high school he joined. He also wanted to serve his country, learn new things, 
and discover a whole new field of study. John Love is the IT or the information te technology person here at Boysville Library. He says to, uh, when I asked John Love what he, what I could take away from this, he said that um, not only to me but to all young gener all young people in this generation, if you have the chance to experience or do new things, do them because you may not ever get the chance to do them again. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tommy and I am I interviewed Chris Gilko, a sniper that served from 1992 to 1999. That is seven years of active service. Luckily, he was not at war in the battlefield that much. While he was in the battlefield, he went to places like Somalia, Okani. Okinawa, Japan, and Niger. His favorite was Niger. He was a staff sergeant. I mean, he was a staff sergeant or an E5. He enlisted because he wanted to become a marine, marine, marine sniper. It sounded like an interesting job, and it was also exciting. He he was in the U.S. Marine Corps as a mortar man, then a sniper. Surprisingly. Surprisingly, he felt he felt relaxed and focused while using his weapon. He made friends in the military that he that he hopes will keep in touch with him for a while. Mr. Gilko says that he he takes pride in his job and wants younger people to do that too. Hello, my name is Zaka, and I have interviewed uh, Bill Cobalt. Bill Cobalt is 53 uh, years old and a staff sergeant in the U.S. Air Force National Guard. Uh, now he's in the medical administration. He now served for 14 years. He first enlisted in 1982 to 1994. Then he rejoined to 2015 to now. He has served in Texas for uh, basic training. South Dakota, Iraq, and Syracuse. Mr. Kobo uh, has traveled to Iraq uh, for overseas. His favorite place for traveling was uh, Texas. Uh, he first, uh, he, this is because his um, family had been in the military for generations and he wanted to see his country. In his free time, he liked to go hiking in South Dakota. Uh, he was, uh, when he was cleaning the air pipe, he would go to clean it three times two to three times a day to check on it because make sure there's no smushers on the glass or the airplane was intact before because the person was going out to the airplane needs to see the wheelchair uh, windshield and so he would do this little uh, little extra effort for a key to that job is to do the best you could do. Hi, my name is Brendan. On Sunday, November 5th, I had the honor of interviewing Melanie Nazadowski. Melanie is currently 41 years old and served for eight years from 1999 to 2007. She served in the Army National Guard and achieved the rank of Sergeant E5 while she served. She enlisted to pay for college since not much was going on at the time. She did not choose the military as a career because she already had a full-time job when she joined. She worked for the Army National Guard part-time when she joined until she was deployed. Before she was deployed, she worked as a merchandiser for Target. She never went back to her job after deployment. In basic training, they would wake up at 4.30 a.m., run for two miles, then do push-ups, eat breakfast, clean the barracks, train, and then eat lunch. Before she was deployed, she served at the Schenectady Armory. Later, she was deployed in Iraq. While overseas, she traveled to Kuwait, Babylon, Iraq, and Baghdad. Her favorite place that she went to is Babylon. Deployment was very rough since she had a job and had, a, had to have a quick wedding ceremony before deployment. 
It was also very rough because she was dropped into a harsh foreign environment. For part of her deployment, they were living in a place that had been so badly bombed that the buildings were just shells. Most buildings were missing roofs and had holes in the walls. There was no air conditioning, heat, or plumbing. It was 107 degrees Fahrenheit almost every day. Since they had no plumbing, they would burn their pee and poop. <laughs> After two weeks of being in this location, someone died. So it was very, very like strange for them. Melanie served as a communication specialist. She was responsible for keeping track of vehicles and setting up mobile antennas. Um, while they were there, they mostly MREs or meals ready to eat. Sometimes they got burgers and veggies. One time, however, they went to a local settlement. They were told that they didn't want to displease the locals, so they should obey the local customs. The most interesting that the most interesting thing Melanie ate was goat throat that the locals gave them. In their free time, they played volleyball almost every night since they had a volleyball net, and they played a lot of cards. Melanie is proud that she came back with an optimistic mind. If she could change her experience, she wouldn't. Melanie received three medals, one of which for Valor. When she got back, she went back to school full-time, but ended up being a stay-at-home mom. Also, she did an inter internship in the Senate for a year. It was hard for her coming home because she had to adapt and change her lifestyle, and so did her family. Melanie is proud that she served. It is hard for her to explain to people what her time in the service was like because, it's, because it is so different than most people's lives. She did form some very good friendships while she was there and has kept up with some of these people on Facebook. Also, when she got back, she had a nice wedding with her husband because the one that they had before deployment was very rushed. Some of her friends from the military attended her wedding. Her advice for younger generations is to ask for advice on which jobs to choose in the military because there's a wide range of, wide range of jobs that most people don't know about when they enlist. One interesting story that I would like to highlight is that she helped out at Ground Zero the day after September 11th. She helped search for people and clean up the rubble. The recovery from, from September 11th was a true test of American strength, and the fact that she was a part of that is amazing. My name is Jack, and I have the honor of interviewing Mr. Smithson. Mr. Smithson was a U.S. Army Specialist. He was an engineer and worked on road and bridge repair. Mr. Smithson joined the Army when he was 18 and served as an engineer and earned the rank of Specialist. Mr. Smithson told us that he was 16 when 9-11 happened, and he felt he needed to do something. He also told us that he thought serving in the military would give him some good life skills, so that is why he chose engineering in the military. He served a total of eight years and was active for six. He served <coughs> one year in Iraq, repairing roads and bridges. Mr. Smithson told us that at times he was scared, bored, excited, and had fun. In his spare time, he watched movies with his friends. Also, he set up a camo net behind his barracks in between two trees and played volleyball. Also, his wife sent him a guitar so he could play with his other buddies that had guitars. He told us that he really enjoyed doing these things. He told us some of his favorite memories were basic training, people he was with, and one day, when he was fixing a road, these kids came up to him and once said, Bazuna, which means cat. As the child handed him a rabbit's foot that had stitching as eyes, a nose, and a mouth. When we asked Mr. Smithson what he was most proud of, he told us it was helping the people in Iraq. Returning from Iraq was hard. He sat around doing nothing while waiting for college to start. He had some of the signs of PTSD. He would have night terrors three times a week and be extremely paranoid when driving. He found that, he would, he, he found that when he was done serving, he was different than when he went in. He told us that he had to rebuild relationships. Wait, writing about his experiences helped him feel better. While serving the country, he earned Army Com Commendation Medal, Conduct Medal, and Global War on Terror. If he could change anything, he wouldn't because he likes everything the way it is. When he got back, it was a little hard finding a job. 
He worked at a before and after school, the Red Cross, and a landscaper. Finally, the business world. Thank you for your service. I am Braden, and I have the honor of interviewing Matt Stone Stonesifer. Matt is an Army veteran. He served in Korea and Afghanistan on the bomb squad. He served in the Army for nine years. Matt started in the Army after high school and thought that it gave him the discipline and structure he needed. When he was in training, he couldn't know any of the real names of the parts of the bombs. He also couldn't take home his notes. Imagine studying for a test with no notes. 60% of the people failed the test, and the passing grade was 85. There was this one time where he had to stay in a truck called a Jerv, and he had to stay in it for like a week or so, and he didn't have any shower, and he could only have two MREs a day. <coughs> When he was in Korea, he got to eat lots of Korean food, and his favorite was bulgogi, which is the Korean equivalent of a cheeseburger. <laughs> he has a service dog named Hemi. He has Hemi because he has some injuries from being too close to the explosions of the bombs. Hemi can sense the feelings of Matt, so if Matt gets like scared, he can take Matt to the, say, a corner of a place and get him calmed down. Besides the bulgogi, jerv, and 100 bombs disposed per year, my favorite story was when Matt was in Afghanistan. A kind of army policeman said to him that there was a bomb behind a wall. Checked behind, he checked behind the wall and there was a car battery. He had a bad feeling about it, so he put explosives on it and blew it up and the battery went flying. Normally, the battery would have been blown to pieces, so he thought it had to be rigged with something. After he came back from the military, he started his own construction build business, but since he had some minor injuries, he couldn't work the full hours he, he needed. That is my interview, and thank you for your service. My name is Dave, and I was given the honor of interviewing Staff Sergeant Robert Spore, Jr. from the 2108th Infantry, 1st Infantry Division of the United States Army National Guard. He decided to join the military in 2000 because of his father, who was in the Air Force, two of his friends, who went to the military before him, called him money, and because he wanted to do something greater for his country. Once he had joined the Army National Guard, he went through his training. Training consisted of 14 weeks of orchestra practice, ceremony practice, and exercises. After he completed standard training, Sergeant Staff Sergeant Spore with the MOS, or Military Occupational Speciality, where he was taught about heavy weapons, specifically anti-air and anti-vehicle weapons, four weeks, for a complete training time of 18 weeks. In 2003, he was deployed and sent to the base designated Fort Yarn, the forward operating base in Baghdad, Iraq. When he was there, his job was to prevent the enemy from destroying U.S. military convoys traveling through the region, as they were soft targets and were easy for the enemy to attack. This group would look for possible thrusts to soft targets in the area and retaliate and chase after the enemy if necessary. In order for him to do his in order for him to do this job, he had to have the right equipment. His squad had a few cargo trucks and armored Humvees, with half of the Humvees equipped with M2 Browning machine guns, and the other half equipped with M19 grenade launchers. At one time, when him and his squad were doing root players for a convoy, they discovered a car on the side of the road filled with 60 artillery shells and they knew it was going to be used for an attack on the convoy they were protecting. He was then given the privilege of blowing off the car, and blow it up he did. He shot the car with an ET-4 anti-tank rifle, and as he said, it popped like a tin can. In fact, the shell fire from the rifle sliced through the car, blew up the artillery shells, and kept going. <laughs> Other than that amazing experience, his favorite part of his service so far has been when he got to train in England. When he was there, he received urban combat training, Montauk cocktail training, with the latter of the two being pretty fun, and he got to see the sights, like Stonehenge and Big Ben. When he was not protecting convoys, Staff Sergeant Spore was back at the forward base for Bjorn. When he was there, he ate MREs, but he was sent so much mac and cheese from back home, they said he pretty much survived on it. 
not eating delicious mac and cheese, protecting soft targets, or doing things around the base. He and his squad mates cleaned their weapons, exercised, read, slept, and watched movies together. He was and is still friends with other half of them to this day, and keeps in touch. After returning from deployment, he had to get used to civilian life and being away from his squad. It was hard, but he coped through meditation, doing and teaching yoga, and creating a song with the group Songwriting with Soldiers. He said he was reluctant at first to write a song about his military experiences, but soon realized that it was much easier than talking. It helped him really tell a story. Robert Spore is a fantastic guy, and I encourage you to ask him about his experiences, as he has so many great stories. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nicholas. On November 12, 2017, as a Boy Scout, I was honored to interview Major Amanda Kona. In the interview, I asked many questions. These are the things I learned. Major Kona is 35 years old. She served in the NY Air National Guard. Her job was to be a navigator. She has been serving for 17 years and still serving. <coughs> She served in Antarctica, New Zealand, and Greenland. She enlisted to serve her country and pay for college. She decided that serving in the military would be her career because while going to college, she found that serving in the military would be more fulfilling and working in the military became family. She said that basic training was hard to be away from her family, stressful, rewarding, and got stronger physically and mentally. While well, she was in Greenland, it was like summer camp and uh, training sites. Antarctica had some uh, hardships. One of them was being away from family and having no internet, but it was still fun. The guidance she gave for younger generation is to have pride in our country and stay engaged. In her free time, she is a mom and a wife. She has a daughter. She also on weekends but likes to go to movies, trips, and play the violin and writing children's books. The most interesting food she ate was ants and rabbits. <laughs> the vehicle she used is a LC-130 ski bird. And the interesting fact about them is they used rockets to take off in the snow. She has helped with medical evacuations in Afghanistan. She has got many medals. The, uh, the Air Flying Medal, which was for flying in more than 20 combat missions. The Antarctic Service Medal, which was for working in Antarctica. And lastly, the Marksman's Ribbon, ribbon which was sh for shooting at M16 well. Finally, her most proud thing she has done is supporting science research in Antarctica and Britain, helping combat troops overseas and supporting emergency efforts for New York State. Hi, my name is Marley and I interviewed Deborah Gardner, who is 51 years old. Deborah is a senior master sergeant who served in the Marines for 14 years and is currently serving in the Air Force for 18 years. She has been serving for 32 years. When she was in the Marines, she traveled to many different places like Japan, Korea, Philippine Islands, and many states across America. In the Air Force, she traveled to Antarctica and many other states across America. Deborah joined the military because she wanted to serve her country. While Deborah was in the Marines, the most challenging thing for her was the flight training because she was the first female, cho female chosen in her unit and she didn't want to fail because people would think women are weak. So knowing that, they gave her the strength to pass. Something I found interesting that Deborah told me was she likes to try new food in every place she goes. She said in New Zealand she had octopus, kangaroo, and alligator. She said it tasted a lot like chicken, but just a little bit tougher. While Deborah is not fighting for our country, she's a firefighter chicken's connectivity. She also goes to school and loves to read and write. Thank you for your service, Deborah, and all the other men and women out there. Hello, my name is Cody and I have the privilege of interviewing Christopher Longo. 
He is currently serving in the Army. He has served in the military for 21 years and plans to serve for a total of 25 years. Chris joined the Navy and then he switched over to the Air Force. When he was finished with the Air Force, he retired from the military for about 13 years before he was convinced he wanted to re-enlist and join the Army. The reason he enlisted was because he had the drive and wanted to do something. Christopher served all over the world in the USA, but his two top favorite places were Germany and Sicily, which if you don't know where that is, it's off the coast of Italy. Something about Christopher is when he joined the military, he didn't tell his family for three whole days. <laughs> if he could change one thing in his military career, he would have never taken the 13 year break. Christopher's words of wisdom are to make a list of all the things you want to do in your life so you can slowly work towards your goals and slowly accomplish them. Christopher has done a lot of interesting things, but that's just a few, so I recommend you ask him about his interesting career. As a Boy Scout, I was fortunate to have been able to learn about veterans. I learned about veterans from interviewing Captain Veronica McCollum. Captain McCollum was 18 years old when she enlisted the service. When she was a little girl, she wanted to be a nurse, so she became a nurse in the military. The reason she enlisted was to serve our country and help soldiers as a nurse. The captain told me that basic training was a lot of running and crawling. While she was in the service, she earned her rank as captain. She has been active in active service for 28 years. One of the places she served was in Haiti. This was one of her most rewarding experiences. She went to help after a big earthquake. When she was there, she also helped rebuild schools and used a little bulldozer. When she, uh, she was there, she was a nurse. She told me that there were people in line for six miles waiting for, to have a checkup. In Italy, a bus broke down. She helped the kids on the bus and gave them water while other soldiers were fixing the bus. She also was in Germany and Arabia. Uh, when she was there, she told me that she helped in the conflict. Um, I thought that could have been scary if enemies were shooting guns at me. She said that they drove and flew to get to places. Overall, I enjoyed my interview and learning about veterans. I was really excited to learn about what happened and what they did. Thank you for your service. Hi, everybody. My name is Olivia, and I had the privilege of interviewing Darcy Novak. Um, she's 44 years old, and she's a master sergeant in the Air Force. She had many jobs within the military, including positions in communications, international guard, security, and she now has a job in personnel. Darcy enlisted into the military out of high school in 1991 and was placed in communications, which she worked for 10 years. Um, she then cross-trained into the security uh, department after the tragic event of 9-11, um, where she became a squad leader of 14 guys for 14 years. In her current job, Darcy works in personnel in the Human Resources Department, where she has had a full-time job since 2014. Darcy served in many places, including Tanker Base, Oklahoma, uh, Belgium, Kelly, Texas, and is currently serving in Rome Labs, New York. She loved all the places that she traveled, but she told me that her favorite would, was Belgium, because she fortunately had family there that she could visit on occasion. Um, and it was so close to many other places and countries that she was uh, able to travel and taste many new foods and experience many new cultures. Um, Darcy enlisted right out of high school, um, and she enlisted because she really didn't know what she wanted to do. She decided on joining the military because it was a good option for her in terms of structure. 
She had a father in the mil or in the Navy, excuse me, and growing up she looked up to him and she saw that he really enjoyed it. She decided on the Air Force because unlike other branches, the Navy frightened her, um, especially being surrounded by water. Uh, she since has really enjoyed her decision. While interviewing Darcy, one story that I found really interesting is how Darcy felt most proud about serving her country. Um, she was deployed overseas, and while on assignment, her troop ran over an IED in the Humvee. Uh, she was in the top hatch and was blown out of the vehicle. She suffered muscle trauma and some intense back and neck pain. While in the hospital and during her recovery, she received an email from her head sergeant. The email wrote about how proud she was of Darcy, and Darcy since then received high praise and began, began taking her second lease on life. She also realized for herself that everything happens for a reason. After this experience, Darcy felt truly proud of what she was doing for the country. Thank you, Darcy, for your time. Hi, I'm Michael and I have the privilege of interviewing Chief Master Sergeant E-9, Vincent Princiato. Mr. Princiato's brother-in-law had a large influence on his decision to join the Air Force, uh, joining on May 7, 1985. Mr. Princiato is going on his 33rd year of service. Mr. Princiato is based out of Schenectady, New York, and is part of a team that conducts annual trips to Antarctica. He and his team work to fuel and load the planes and stay mission capable for landing on the biggest desert in the world. He and his team work to fuel and uh, load planes, and once landing in Antarctica, the priority becomes unloading researchers and taking off within 45 minutes so the plane engines don't freeze. That's not a lot of time. The plane has an orange tip on the plane so that if the plane gets buried, it is still visible in the snow. The plane also possesses skis in order to land on the snowy terrain. Mr. Princiato's most memorable experience in the service was in 2005 during the height of the Iraq War. While stationed on a base east of Baghdad, Mr. Princiato had to fly in and out of the base with supplies, having to shut off the engines, losing power and sight during the night, and coast in undetected, avoiding to being seen. While sleeping, mortar fire from enemies outside the base shook the ground and could be heard throughout the night. I appreciated this opportunity to meet and learn from an active serviceman and to learn about the experiences our military engaged in. Thank you for your service. My name is Kaylin, and I have had the honor of interviewing Chris Spencer with an Eagle Scout. He has served in the Army for 23 years so far after training to drive and use a gun on a tank, becoming a nuclear, biological, and chemical officer, to training to fly a helicopter. He is now a UH-60 Black Hawk helicopter pilot. Chris has served all over the world, including Canada, Kuwait, Pakistan, Iran, and Honduras. Honduras was his favorite place because he was able to build schools for the children there. Also, one time, he got caught in a sandstorm in Iran, and he forgot to cover his ears, and sand was in his ears for a week. He enlisted because he wanted to give back to his country. And because his father encouraged him to. His father was a helicopter pilot in the Vietnam War. One time, for training, he was dropped off in a remote part of Alabama, and he had a story he could not tell his officers. When he was captured, the officers interrogated him and the other soldiers to tell the story. They did this to show what it was like to be a war person. Some soldiers quit then, but Chris did not stop to become the person he is today. I thank Chris for his service. Daniel, can you speak really loudly? Can you speak really loud? You can. My name is Daniel and I have the honor of interviewing Jason Zilop. Jason Zilop is 41 years old and is ranked a major in the military. Jason is in the Air Force slash the National Guard. 
He is currently a deputy commander. He has served 21 years total, six years enlisted and 15 years as an officer. He enlisted because his family had a lot of veterans, such as his father and his grandfather. Basic training for him was difficult, but he had a good drill instructor who was fair. There are lots of early mornings and late nights, and there are many things to do. Jason has served in Switzerland, Germany, Greenland, and Afghanistan. He got to those locations by flight. While in the military, he used machinery such as forklifts, buses, and trucks. He traveled to Austria, Holland, France, Belgium, and more. His favorite was Amsterdam during New Year's. Some of Jason's favorite moments were working with professional people and people with high moral code and values. He enjoyed the excitement and possibility of being deployed. In his free time, he liked to do physical fitness two to three hours a day while traveling to, er, and while traveling to different locations, Jason has ate zebra, gazelle, crocodile, ostrich, and bone. Okay. Okay. Alright, so thank you all for your service. In communication with Colleen Zeliff, and there was we we put together some military care packages, and we have a very generous community, and we received a thank you from the first packages that were sent out from these men and women in uniform, and thank you to all of them. And also, we did another collection: Soldiers, Angels, Treats for Troops. And the children and the adults in the community donated 136 pounds of their Halloween candy to treat our veterans at the Stratton VA Medical Center. And my colleague, Debbie Sternklar, and I will be bringing that, those treats to them next week. And thanks to the Teens Care Group who spent their half day off from school making treats for visitors to the Fisher House of the Stratton VA Medical Center. The teens baked 40 pumpkin muffins and 28 cake bites. They also made 50 chocolate treats, packaged everything, and even washed the dishes. <laughs> thanks to the many people who helped make this series of programs at the Voorheesville Pub Public Library such an enriching experience for our community. Thanks, thanks to the school district, thanks to the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, thank you to my staff. Um, I, I'm, I'm really proud of the boys and the girls who interviewed. They, they really took this project seriously, and they really showed a lot of respect, as they should, to the men in uniform who keep us safe here in America. And right now we are going to have a short intermission. There's lovely refreshments provided by our friends of the library. So I think we've been sitting long enough. Why don't you get up and stretch, um, use the restroom, get some refreshments. Thank you.